uh, let's see, it's Thursday morning. We've got a full day of looking at timber. We haven't been doing a whole bunch of stuff here lately. It's It's been so hot here in southwest Missouri, and I just, if I can get out of working when it's hot, I'm going to get out of working when it's hot. We'll, we'll do a little bit, you know, but just kind of a, enough to keep things moving and get by. You know, we don't we don't work any any long or hard days with the weather like it is right now because there's heat advisories. I think you know yesterday it was in the upper 90s here with the heat index. I think they said like between 105 and 110 was the heat index. So it was pretty miserable yesterday. I, I did move a skitter. If you guys follow the Instagram or Facebook accounts, I did move a skitter up to northern Missouri Tuesday evening. <clears throat> and I, I moved the skitter for some guys that, that cut for me from time to time. I might sub some jobs out if I get too busy or too much going on. So I moved their skitter up there so they could get started. And it was a little 440B cable skitter, which... They weigh nothing. But it never fails in, in anything social media. You get people that that talk before they think. They don't... Or they're, they talk and they don't know what they're talking about. Which... Somebody jumped on there and the first thing they said was like... You're so overloaded it's not even funny. And I usually don't... I usually don't reply to things like that. But sometimes... Sometimes I do. And I did that day. And like I said, you know the skid steer I've been using? That Caterpillar skid steer weighs more than that 440B. It does. And nowhere even remotely close to being overloaded. Not not even in the slightest bit were we even the hint of being overloaded with a 440B cable skidder on here. And like I said, I mean, and then somebody said something about, yeah, haul at night to dodge the DOT. Four lane highway. I drove right up I 49 into Kansas City onto 435. We waved as we drove by the scale house. Now, we got a lot going on, and I work every chance I get. It's not about dodging the DOT. Now, don't get me wrong. Now, there's, I don't want to run into the DOT because they, they never have anything good to say, no matter what you're doing. But yeah, it's, we weren't trying to dodge the DOT. We're just trying to make hay while we can and get work done while we can and get those boys started on that job in a timely manner because you know I, I bought the job up there and I've got people depending on me so people I'm telling you people never fails but today like I said we're looking at timber today we've got two jobs to look at and I always say I'm going to take you guys with me when I walk out of stand of timber and I have full intentions too, but a lot of times if, if the landowner and my clients go with me, I, I don't I don't roll the camera, I don't roll the phone to the GoPro. I, I just don't. I mean, out of respect for my for my clients, I, I try to give them the attention because I'm wanting to talk to them to see what their harvest needs are and see what they're looking to achieve on a harvest. So, I, you know, and they don't they don't want to be with my ugly face on YouTube for the world to see. I know that, but. If, if I ever get a chance, and maybe today I will, if I get a chance to walk timber by myself, I'll, I'll film it. Because, I mean, I, I know there's guys that want to go through there and they want to see what I see when we look at that stuff. And, and we'll go over some things. So that's what we got planned today. It's going to be a hot day. My first appointment's not till 10 a.m. over at the Bennett Springs area, which is just back west of Lebanon, Missouri. Now, we have cut quite a bit of timber back in that area throughout the years. And the timber over there, it runs one of two ways, really good or really bad. It seems like there's no in-between. I've cut some really good walnut and some really good white oak timber over there. And in the same turn, I've cut some really bad white oak and some really bad red oak over there. But you never know. Second job's in Marshfield, Missouri, which is just uh, up I-44 from Springfield. So hopefully pretty excited. You know, I've, I always love getting to see the countryside, love getting to look at timber. Um, you know, it's just part of the job, just looking at timber. You know, it takes a lot to, to keep us going. So, you know, there's I've got to look at timber tomorrow. I looked at timber Monday. I looked at timber Tuesday. Just, you know, it it doesn't take long if you don't stay on top of looking at timber. You know, you, you'll get behind. You'll start to lose jobs. People talk. So that's just one of the things you really got to stay up on. 
is, is keeping all the timber you get calls for, keeping it looked at. When when you're, you know, when you're self, when you're cutting for yourself like we are. I mean, I know some of you guys are, are contract cutters and you cut for mills or you cut for other individuals, which is a great thing. Don't get me wrong, but when <clears throat> when you when you buy your own timber, you really got to keep up on it. So. Let's go see if we can look at some timber, and I hope that I can take you guys on a walk with me through the timber, and let's see if we can find something worth cutting today. All right, we're walking out this timber now, this first little job today. Uh, it's it's oak-dominant timber, which I've, I've cut a couple decent jobs right here in this area where I'm at over here, right by the Bennett Springs National Park campground here just west of Lebanon. And, I mean kind of the thing about the timber over here that i've noticed it's either going to be really good or it's going to be really bad and that right there to me is not a good sign to start out with you, you know you've got some dead trees one two three uh i mean there's some good size white oak in here cobwebs are bad i hate i absolutely hate looking at timber in the summertime you can't see anything i mean and people like today they're really wanting a close estimate on what this timber is going to bring, and it's it's almost next to impossible to give a good estimate in the summertime because unless you walk right up on every tree, now that's a that's a good looking red oak right there. The quality or black oak, should I say? The quality on that actually looks really good too. It's a young timber stand, or it's got a lot of young trees coming on, should I say? A lot of a lot of scrub. But it's a lot of, you know, you've got some hickory here. There's some smaller white oak growing. Brush, a lot of brush. But that's the, that's the future timber stand. Gosh darn cobwebs. Little white oak right there. And see, stave's real big here in Missouri. And that's that old red oak there, red black oak. She's about done for, got a bad scar. And see, that, that's not even a stave quality white oak right there. That'd just be a, a tie grade. It's, it's got too many defects to make a good stave log. Like I said, you just, after a while, you, you look at timber in areas long enough, you kind of know what to expect. And we don't have real good oak timber here in southwest Missouri anyway. It's, it's just not that good. Um, every now and then we'll, we'll cut a we'll cut a really good job of oak depending on the soil and the geographics of it i'm sorry i'm getting spider webs here break this branch off there we go but yeah it's uh see and that, that's a good example right there here's a prime example of a tree that this should have been harvested a long time ago this is a this was a good, beautiful white oak. That's a good sized tree, but see it's bleeding right there out of that. Uh, got a seam running up it right here. It's got some dead limbs coming out of the top of it. So just me looking at that, I mean, as from a logging standpoint, someone gonna buy that tree, I'm, I'm not gonna put a whole Yeah, excuse me. I'm, I'm just not gonna put a whole lot of faith in that tree on, on the quality of it because those telltale signs right there but at the same time we got a white oak right here now this has got a good stave log in it, it looks like yeah we we could probably cut a 10 foot stave and we got quite a bit of material up there above it just pallet and tie grade material of course you can see some trees down off in here too now this this would be a good little stave log right here like i said another good black oak another good black oak but like I said, it's it's people, and I, I understand. I, I try to look at both sides of the spectrum when when looking at timber, because we don't we don't clear cut. I don't like to cut small oak timber. I like to be pretty selective. And for instance, on trees like that big white oak there that's bleeding, doing a selective harvest every period, you know, every so many years periodically, normally probably ten to fifteen if if you cut it, if you're very selective. It, you you can you can improve the overall health of the stand dramatically, and that's that's why I'm against clear cutting. It's just for that fact that I don't 
I would rather come back every, you know, 10 to 15 years as my dad did and his dad did as, you know, it's just the way I was taught to log rather than go through there and just murder everything. But this, uh, this isn't a very healthy timber stand just from what I'm seeing it. You know, there's another dead tree there in front of us. Got a white oak there. They might be able to cut a little stave log out of it. That, uh, that tree there, it's this black oak in front of us. It's got some dead limbs starting to sprout out, just kind of swollen down here on the, on the trunk of it. Got a seam running right there. So these are all things I take in consideration when looking at timber. It's, and I know some people are probably like, I'm grading it pretty hard, but you know, when, when you're trying to tell somebody a, a figure accurate, you know, money mark on what their timber's looking at bringing, I mean, you, you gotta, I, I don't want to tell somebody and get their hopes up and in the end result, it's not there. So I am always, I always shoot someone a low dollar. That way it kind of, it covers, because I can't see these trees, you know, I, I'm only going off what I know about timber and what I've, you know, just my knowledge of being in the timber, my experience is telling me, my instinct. So I like to give myself a little wiggle room, because I, I do, I hope I'm wrong a lot of times, and I hope the timber cuts good. But, man, a, a lot of times it doesn't. You know, just, when you're in the timber long enough, you see these things day to day, you kind of know what it's going to do. But I would, it, it's a lot easier to tell someone a dollar amount and it bring more, and they're happy, than tell them a dollar amount and it brings less, and they're not happy. So... A lot of times when I bid jobs, I always go with a lower figure on the low side, what I think it'll bring and tell them. That way when it brings more, and if it brings more, they're happy and surprised. And they think I'm a great logger. But this, uh, this timber stand here needs a lot of work. And there's some, and we, as we drop off down on this holler here and these draws, We'll see some better quality trees because that's where your good timber grows. But see, just like these big, big oak trees here, I just have my doubts that they cut very good. I'd, I'd say they're going to be bad in the hearts. A lot of it's going to have to be butted off before it clears up. Like I said, I could be wrong, but I doubt. See, it problems you run into right there. Gosh, I can feel ticks crawling on me. The bugs are bad. Spider webs are bad. Luckily, we got a good road here to walk down. Now, the lady I was talking to a minute ago, she said they had a bear sighting over here not long ago, which, man, there could be anything in this country through here. This, you get over around Bennett Springs off the Niagara River. This is wild country, man. There's nothing but deep hills and hollers, draws. A lot of, it's a big, big summertime hot spot over here, Bennett Springs. Uh, of course, there's a lot of floating. People do trout fishing down here. They, you know, the, there's a, like I said, Bennett Springs is a big, big spring that just boils ice cold water out of the ground. I don't know how many millions of gallons a day, but it's a big spring. And I've floated over here before. It's really nice. see it really ain't that good back here on the back side of this this is all pretty scrubby and junky and that that's what's bad i mean you know i look, I look at, at a lot of timber and i buy a lot of timber but you know maybe one one out of every well maybe two out of every 10 jobs i look at i buy and not because i just don't get it bought just because a lot of times it's not worth cutting you know the, the timber is not that good or it's not big enough to harvest. I mean, there's a there's a multitude of factors involved. Yeah, right there. Tick. Seems like the ticks get worse every year. Walk back out of this hole. I'm just glad there's some paths here to walk down. That kind of gives you an idea of the of a lot of the stuff I look at on a on a daily basis or on a weekly basis and granted this is oak timber the walnut will run a little different in places I go and the oak will too it just depends on the like I said the geographics where I'm at but 
like I said, you you log in enough areas and you look at timber in enough areas, you get to know what it's gonna, or you, you got a good idea what it's gonna be like before you get there. Whew. That's a pretty good hill to walk up. Still got a ways to go. So, like I said, that's the first stop today. I yeah, that's the first stop today, so that's probably all we need to show with this. So, hopefully this next job, if we get some time to ourselves to video, hopefully I can show you something a little different, a little better. But, a good little stave log, it ain't real big, but it's a good little stave log. Whew, another one right there. Okay, let's get out of here. This is the big problem with buying your own timber is a lot of people, and I'm not saying all, I'm not saying all, but there are some people whenever you make appointments, they just, I, I'm real big on punctuality. You know, if I, if I say I'm going to be there at a certain time, chances are I'll usually try to be there a little bit early because I don't like people to wait on me. And I always like to call people before I head a certain place to look at timber just to let them know I'm coming. I called this gentleman 45 minutes ago to let him know that, hey, I was on my way. I'll be there, you know, within the hour. And, you know, I've been trying to call him now for 20 minutes and he's not answering his phone. And I'm just, it's not, I'm not in the area. I've never looked at timber right in this area, but to me, it just doesn't look real promising anyway. So... It, there comes a dilemma. I'm just sitting here on a county road right off the highway waiting because I think I'm in the right spot, but I'm not sure. Because you, you never know. I mean, GPS, you know, I, I get physical addresses and I just type it into my GPS and go. So sometimes you get real close. Sometimes you get there. Sometimes you never know where they're going to send you. So, but he's not answering his phone. So, but it always comes the, do you wait or do you go on or what do you do? And, I mean, I'll wait a little bit, but, I mean, you can't wait all day, so. We'll wait a little bit longer, and I guess we'll see if we can get a return call or see if we can get a hold of him and look at September. If not, I guess we'll just head back to Stockton. So, the joys of being a self-employed logger. Here they are. <laughs> Some days are better than others. Oh, well. Well, that was, uh, needless to say, the guy didn't show up. I got, I don't know, 20 miles down the road and he finally called. But I guess I'll try to reschedule that is what, what I told him I'd do. So I'll try to maybe maybe the first of next week I'll try to get out there and look at his timber. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like I said, uh, kind of a walk. I was hoping I could do a little more walkthrough with you guys today. And maybe in the future we'll get to walk through some more timber. But it just kind of gives you an idea of the oak and stuff. I look at here in southwest Missouri. I mean, sometimes we see better oak. Sometimes we see worse oak. But that's that's pretty run-of-the-mill what you see in this video today. Kind of, kind of what we look at for the most part. Like I said, every now and then we will cut some really exceptional oak. But, for you know, 75% of the oak we cut in southwest Missouri just isn't real good. Unless we're cutting bur oak down on the rivers or something. The, just the red oak, the white oak, the black oak. It's, it's not generally real good oak timber. It's just got a lot of mineral, shake, fire scar, stump worm. It's just got too many problems. But guys, thanks a lot for watching. Be sure to subscribe to the channel if you already haven't. Check us out on Facebook and Instagram, Turner Logging LLC. Check out Timber Tracker on um, Facebook and Instagram. Download that free app. The new website is underway. Um, super, super, super excited about the new website everything it's going to do it's it's really really going to do some great things i'm hoping for the logging industry as a whole so be sure to keep that in mind check it all out guys we're going to make some videos this weekend because we should be cutting some logs this weekend so we shall talk to you later thanks so much